This is going to be an amazing set. We have accessories before the fact. That's accessories before the fact. An amazing duo, David and Cheryl. You gotta check them out here at the Vintage Improv Follies. And if you wanna check out even more improv, sign up for the festival in October. It's on the website, vintageimprov.org. And without further ado, let's get our accessories on. I mean, I accessorized today. Get your accessories for accessories before the fact. See them soon, yeah. Hi, yes, we are accessories before the fact. There was a time when we were accessories after the fact, but we realized, um, you know, it just didn't flow. So now here we are. But either way, we take no prisoners and we take no suggestions. David and I work together in an organic way of just reading each other. And no, yeah, yeah, we do. We do. Don't deny it. It will be a crime scene otherwise. And then... We just go from there and we do scenes when we decide we want to end scenes, we end scenes. We're just, we're just, I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm. Well, so I just, if I could just clarify, okay. Um, my, my scene partner is absolutely one of my best accessories. She makes me look good. Just saying. Just, yep. just saying. And he's my favorite handbag. Sitting in the sweltering sun without an umbrella for 22 seconds past the start time, you have made my day. I'm a, I'm a better man for it. Is this your passive aggressive way of saying that I should have brought an umbrella? You know me, Padawan, don't you? Raul, I can read you like a book. Not necessarily a book that I can get past the first chapter, but I, I can, I know who you are. Not, not, not like a book. People get finished with books and it like after you turn the page enough times, there's nothing else. Yeah, you reach the end. Sometimes there's an epilogue, but... Um... Most of the time, that's it. You're done. I mean, I, you know, some people will read a book over and over and over again if it's really interesting, and and it really moves them in a way that they they want to recreate that feeling time and time again. I, I I feel like I'm getting set up for friends with or without benefits. Well. As your insurance provider, I can I can sign you up for benefits. So let let's let's not rush to any any hasty conclusions here because I'm I'm planning on being in excellent health until I'm dead. So if we could modulate my premium with that in mind. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't think you're not as healthy as you look. I mean, as I said, I can read you like a book. And and part of what I'm reading is that, you know, your spine is kind of cracked and you're fraying a little at the edges and you're a little dog-eared, to be honest. These, these lines were embedded during my LSD-crazed years. That is just in my past. Wow, actually, I, I guess I don't know that. I didn't know that you were. In, ah, you were wow. You didn't think I had a past. You no. thought I was so fresh and vibrant that it was okay. That sounds and more interesting than I the, thought you were. The, the gray hairs, oh, this slide shows you. So mm -hmm. the, the gray hairs, okay, I, I, I put those on, I, I dye my hair gray to to keep. 
it's kind of an accessory, but the, the key is, is that it, it keeps the groupies away. They no longer confuse me as, as being Matt Damon. It was tough. Oh, I, jeez. I, I thought people were confusing you with Keith Richards. I, um, not, but this is, but, you know, I find you fascinating now. So, so does that mean that, that, you know, what? I feel like I'm doing all the heavy lifting. Mm -hmm. um, tell me 17 things you find fascinating about me. 17? That's, that's a very large, very large number. An unusual. I don't think anybody asked for 17 of anything. It's, it's a prime number. And the association is I am in my prime numbers you're in your prime numbers so okay. you're okay three three is a prime number just so, um just <clears throat> um, the fact that you can stand still upright is fascinating to me i find that absolutely amazing um, um that you thought even for five seconds that somebody might have mistaken you for matt damon that's that's incredibly fascinating Stop, 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 okay? Your your first comment, uh, your first fascination point of that I could still stand upright, I, I'm seated right now. Oh. Is, that your, is that your passive aggressive behavior coming out? You know me, you can read me like a book. You're taking this so well. I'm I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I really expected I don't know. Maybe screaming. <laughs> Throwing things around, maybe, um, perhaps just setting fire to the whole house. But you're calm. I'm really impressed. Proverbially, before the storm. Mm -hmm. Proverbially, yeah, are you? Quoting proverbs, is this, should I be prepared for this isn't how you're actually feeling, you're something happening? Is it, you're processing, you're processing this and I should wait until you react in a way that seems more logical under the circumstances? You don't have many options anymore, do you? No, your truth is you're actually my last hope. <laughs> you, you come in here with this non-specific death sentence and you look at me as your last fucking hope? Are you batshit? Oh, well, this, is, this is more what I was thinking would happen. I'm getting a headache. <sighs> so I just want you to know that it's in me. I am human. I do have feelings. That's, that's interesting. That's all I wanted. That's all I wanted to know that you had feelings. That's that's why I did it. You know? 
that's why I invited the Jehovah Witnesses in. I, I just wanted to see how you'd react, see if you had feelings. If I were a religious man, I would pray for you. So you're saying you're not a religious man now? Have you not been paying attention to anything I've been doing for the last accumulation of this time interval? Wait, You've but not you, t you talked about proverbs, proverbial before. I, I thought you were religious. I thought maybe this is also a nice way for you to meet new people. Um, You really do need to meet more people. I'm, I'm, I'm not going back to prison. It, it's the same people day in and day out. And the lifers, they were there before. I'm not going back to prison. You, you saw through my plan right from the first, didn't you? That's why you didn't react. That's why you didn't go nuts. You saw what I was doing. There's something desperately special about you. Definitely desperate. <laughs> I'm your... Uh, what? Take that, you scoundrel. I rarely use the expression, the funniest thing happened. But this is one of those rare moments. The funniest thing happened. You say it was the funniest thing, but it really wasn't funny to me. <clears throat> well, I mean, the joke was on you, so it's not, you know, surprising that you go like, well, that wasn't funny. I feel uh, ridiculed, minimized, mistreated. Um, I get that. Well, but see, it's this, it's this gesture. That's, yeah. that's the one that makes me feel disrespected. <laughs> So is it from bottom up or, or top down? Anyway. Oh, just... like, so if I cared, I don't even know what not to do. It's, it's a very dismissive gesture. It's very dismissive. And, and I got it. Yeah. I, I got it. Get, that I... Me. Get the joke on me. Yeah. What's going on? So d does my tone convey to you that I got it? <clears throat> I got it. You got it. You, you got it that you are never to fill my car with jello ever again. You got that? To, to figure that out from this? I... I thought it was that particular flavor that you found offensive. I, I, I'll, I'll try lime jello next time and let's see if you have the same reaction. Maybe you're just, you know, gelatin phobic. I don't know. I need that car. I need that car to get to work. Now it's just, it's just oozing. It's oozing all the way to the bank. It, it, it is oozing all the way to the bank. And, and, and the wonderful thing is, is that when you, when you sit in this kind of like mobile 
uh, plasmoidal tub, and as you're traveling down the highway, you'll be able to hand out business cards to people and let them know who you are. They will want to know who is in that Jello mobile, whatever the flavor. So are you trying to say this was, this was kind of a branding opportunity you were giving me? That people would notice me that I, I could get a different job other than just standing behind the counter at First National? You think this is going to get me a better job? Whatever. Whatever. No need to look so concerned. This is this isn't what you think it is. I I have a sense of shame. Whatever it is, I have a sense of shame. I can understand why you'd feel ashamed, but really, this is not as big a deal as you think it is. It, I, I think my shame is, is, I think it's in my DNA. Like it, it doesn't matter how much therapy I do or, or who I meet in these, you know, random chat rooms or whatever. I just, I always come away feeling less because of what I do. Well, you're going to these chat rooms and and looking for someone to have your baby is, you know, not, not shameful and it's not as bad as you may think it is, but I'm, I am concerned when you mentioned it being in your DNA. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, that kind of, it's like a pre existing condition and it could be very hard for someone to want to have a child with you if you have DNA that's damaged in that way. Just there, have been, there have been incredible advances in gene modification technology. So if I were to get to that baby creation with someone anywhere, you know, we could like, you know, filter out, I don't know, using lettuce or whatever those advanced things are to like pull out the shame DNA so that none of my partial progeny would have any reference for shame. Barry, you know, I only do cognitive uh, behavioral therapy. I, I can't do, you know, DNA restructuring or, or modification or splicing genes or, or I don't know, even, <clears throat> Stabbing with an ice pick to get that out of you somewhere in your amygdala, but really, I think, I think you need to talk to a genetic counselor. They've all told me to go away. That must make you feel a lot of shame. Don't you zoom. I, th I think you just have to press one of these buttons over here. I think that would that would work. One of these buttons? No, that's not it. Did you? Did you? Um, are you sure you have video on? Um, no, I'm just um I'm wrestling with post glaucoma visual correctedness, mm -hmm. and so these are valuable moments, and I'm piddling them away. Well, may maybe. No, I can help you. I mean, oh, oh, okay, go ahead. 
if, if you need someone to just work your tech for you, I, I can do that. You know, it's. You, you, you could, you could make me appear on the digital stage. Yeah, I actually have a lot more skills than just cleaning your house. Mr. Schwartz, I, I, I'm actually going, I'm going to night school. I'm, I'm learning how to be a digital entrepreneur. Rebecca, I'm, I'm, I have mixed feelings about you wanting to be more than you already are. I, I definitely, I have mixed feelings. You're saying you don't want me to better myself? No, but I understand how you could infer that from my having mixed feelings. I'm just, if you better yourself, then you might give up this job of taking care of my houseplants three hours a week, and then it falls on me. I can help you with that too. I can I can help you with your IT issues and your houseplants. I'm I'm not going to abandon you. I, really, I'm not. Especially because I have at least three more years of school before I get, even get certified. But wait, wait, you're not going to abandon me? No, I, nothing in what I said indicated that I would ever leave your employ for any reason, Mr. Schwartz. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But you're not going to abandon me. Wait. I'm not like your wife and your children and your pets and and my, and my mother. Your mother, yeah, that was that was an ugly scene. <laughs> Sorry, you, 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 I, you heard that. You heard that. I, I tried to, you know, kind of get out of the way, but there was really no way I could avoid that. She wanted me to fire you, and I said. Rebecca is relying upon me for her sustenance, for her self-esteem, for her purpose of being in the world. And I told my mother to go in the ocean. And you did. You, you did. And you pay me back now by going to night school to make yourself better. I'll always have low self-esteem. Don't don't you worry about that. You know, I did. I heard the conversation, and 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 that's what makes me want to stay here even more. I just want to be able to do more for you, Rebecca. Uh, about this not abandoning me. Will you marry me? I'm gonna to have to check my class schedule um, if it fits in with that. Uh, just, there's a good chance I can I can make that work. So you, you'd consider not abandoning me if you could fit it into your schedule. You know, I feel like I feel like you're going back to those abandonment issues. I said I never abandon you. I don't want to better myself. Look at me. I want to stay with you. <laughs> Doesn't that prove? that I have no interest in being better? It does. Thank you for clarifying that. Mr. Schwartz, can I call you your Mr. Schwartz? Yes, you can call me Mr. Schwartz. Get back to me when you have your class schedule and we'll see if we can continue this thing. Can take one less class. That'll make it easier. I mean, I don't know. And on that note, folks, that is our show. Talk about for the win. We are still accessories before the fact. And hopefully, and I have the luxury this evening of playing with the inestimable Cheryl. Okay, who lives 
somewhere, but I'm not going to tell what she could have From Milford, Pennsylvania. And I am with the incalculable, incalculable, incal you're, you're, you're the math major. The yeah, I'm past my prime. I heard it. Calculable, calculable, David. Silverman from, do we want to be specific about where in Massachusetts you are? Or um, I, let's leave that up to me. Bye. So I'm from Amesbury, Massachusetts, okay? And we've had great fun playing, okay? Yes. Come back and we're having fun. Uh, oh my gosh, that was so much fun. Please come back and play next time. When can they see you next time? Next month, same bad channel. Amazing, yes. Awesome accessories before the fact. Woo! This has been such a fun evening here at the Vintage Follies. And I know that you're all just going to have the most amazing night now because you're in a great mood because you saw some fantastic improv. I am Robbie Foss. Thanks for joining. And uh, cheers to Vintage Improv Follies. See you next time. Mickey's not here. <laughs>